It's UvalderRadio.net. It is Robert Miguel here checking in with you. It is National School Choice Week, so we're doing some really cool features on some of our, uh, I guess, private uh, educational options here in Uvalde and Uvalde County. And uh, again, let me just reiterate here from the uh, School Choice Week website, which is schoolchoiceweek.com. What is school choice? School choice means giving parents access to the best K-12 through education options for their children. These options include tr- uh, traditional public schools, public charter schools, magnet schools, private schools, online academies, and homeschooling. And right now, to talk to us about Uvalde Classical Academy, it sounds so hoity-toity, Larry Wright. Hi, how are you? I'm good. It's good to talk to you again. You too. So how's everything going over at the UCA? Everything is going wonderful at UCA. We have been so blessed this school year. Um, Everything is Proceeding along as normal, we, we love that we've been so fortunate to have parent support and um, students here in person all school year long. We've kept everything inside the doors as normal as can be for the students. Um, with the exception of a few who are wearing masks by their choice, everything is just 100% normal when you walk in our doors, and that's exactly the way we and the parents want to keep it. Wow, well, that is, that's really neat to hear. Very exciting stuff. Hey, I'm going to get to you all about COVID here in a minute, but um, I know we, we've talked a couple of times on National School Choice Week, uh, but there, I'm sure, are um, some people out there uh, new to the audience that haven't heard. Let's go ahead and get the background on Uvalde Classical Academy. I know the website is uvaldeclassical.org, but yeah, tell me how long this, uh, this school, this campus has been around, and where did it come from? We are um, a classical Christian school. We've been around for about 13 years, um, starting originally as homeschool, moving into a few collective parents, uh, starting a school together, on to a formal 501c3 organization, all the way up to today, where um, we currently have, in fact, two of our juniors started UCA in uh, kindergarten and first grade, and they have gone to UCA through their entire school career, so we're super excited to have our older high school students. Some of them are now the the fruits of our labor graduating next year um, from UCA, having been students here their entire education career. So, so now, correct me if I'm wrong, so next year, your seniors, though, those ones you mentioned, will have been through the, you know, your school, their entire educational career. Is, is this going to be a first? Is that what you're saying? This is going to be a wow. first. Yes. We've, we've had um, other students who've been here, you know, for, for many years, uh-huh. pre, preschool all the way up, and then for whatever reason, um, either moving out of town or um, transferring elsewhere for different reasons, um, didn't quite make it here all the way through graduation. Um, my son, for example, he was the only one in his class, so he just went straight on to the junior college for his high school uh, rather than be the lone student. But we're so excited about having graduates next year that have been here the entire time. Even though we've had graduates before and we're super proud of those prior graduates, they had transferred in later on in their school years. Um, so we're, we're so excited about next year. Well, I'm going to put you on the spot and ask you to make a deal with me right now to let me interview uh, those students that have gone to UCA for their entire life. I think that would be a really Got it. We, we'd, we'd be super happy to have you do that. All right, so mark us down for that, and that'll be a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, so so Uvalde Classical Academy. Now, now go ahead and give me the, the uh, I know we've talked about this before, but the inspiration for, for starting uh, your school. Uh, you know, the inspiration is just basically a, a group of parents that were the original founders of this school who wanted a place where their kids could go to school um, learning about Jesus first and foremost, Um, learning the true, the good, the beautiful about our world and our education um, without, um, you know, a lot of the the stuff that you might get in public school or or that you might be happy to have as far as the the other activities. They just wanted a core focus on academics, and it's kind of grown from there. We've got some athletics here now. We've got different things that we've incorporated, but it just boiled down to parents who wanted something different for their kids where, you know, the Bible is woven through every single thing that they do, and it was just an immersion in Christian education. And now, once again, go ahead and give me the, the definition of classical education, how it, I guess, um, differs from a public school education or any other type. 
Sure, sure. So a classical education basically um, divides education into a trivium of grammar stages, uh, also known from Dorothy Sayers as the parrot stage, where there's lots of um, repetition, lots of memorization, um, but not necessarily um, what you would expect from grammar school students as far as just the, you know, the ABCs and the one, two, threes. There is lots of classical literature that is memorized and, and scripture that is memorized and lengthy scripture that, that oftentimes parents and students surprise themselves on the amount that they are able to memorize at such a young age. And then moving into those middle grades between 7th and ninth grade is the logic phase where they're starting to, you know, as most parents know, kids become argumentative. So we try to teach them truth and how to argue from a factual standpoint versus just because or for the sake of arguing moving into the rhetoric stage in high school so that they can eloquently um, defend their faith and defend truth um, against what a lot of, you know, what we're seeing in a lot of secular colleges and, and um, places of employment even where we're having to defend what is true versus being canceled or censored. You know, I, I tell you what, that is some really, I mean, we had, we talked about this a year ago today and it's amazing how much the world has changed in one year. And you mentioned about the memorization. I mean, look, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, you know. I mean, I'm a God-fearing, you know, Christian man. Um, but, you know, the Word tells us, you know, to hide the Word in our hearts, right, uh, to memorize. And, you know, I don't think it's... um. I don't think it's a conspiracy theory to say that there we might be living in you know in our lifetime to where you know they might start outlaw, outlawing certain religions. I mean that that's a that's a thing you know, and somebody's going to have to have it you know in the brain in the brain cells. Uh, and then, like you said, you know, cancel culture, man. I mean, um, more and more often um, we're finding that the religious right, you know, the Christian conservatives are the ones being targeted, and that's not. That's not just a conspiracy theory. That is a fact. So uh, this is fantastic that um, you guys are providing an option for those who are cognizant, you know, who who are aware that there is a certain amount of programming or brainwashing, whatever you want to call it, um, in the public schools. And and this is not a critique on our public school system. I think this is just a blanket thing that society has to deal with right now. That's right. In fact, we we talk often around here of how blessed we are to live in Uvalde, where our our school district still honors prayer at all of the events. Yes. Our, our kids in Uvalde are so blessed to have the school that they do have here um, because we are a little more insulated here than we are in some of the cities or in other areas. And so, you know, Uvalde is really blessed to have great school options regardless of what you decide to do for your child. Well, very good. Again, it is National School Choice Week. We're talking to Larry Wright over at the uh, Uvalde Classical Academy. You're the uh, head of school. Uh, let's go ahead and get into, into your educational background. Um, what led you to instruction? Uh, actually, Uvalde Classical Academy led me to instruction. <laughs> I, I, uh, I was actually... In several other careers, not several, I guess I should say, that sounds bad, but in a few other careers in my younger days. Um, and then when our youngest son began school, uh, we happened to be in that group of families who wanted something different for our kids. And I went back to school and changed careers. And, you know, 20 years later or so, with uh, working with different kids and everything else, and I'm full-fledged into it now, so... Now, you know, again, when when Uvalde Classical Academy started, you know, as a seed, um, it was basically a, a group of homeschoolers, right? Um, and then now you're on a campus. You've been doing this for quite some time now. You're kind of old pros. But what was what's that transition been like, those growing pains? How have you guys uh, managed and maintained that? Uh, you know, probably the biggest growing pain we have is um, not necessarily enrollment. We, we don't ever expect to balloon to be a, a 600 student or 1,000 student student campus. You know, we live in a small town. We know the nature of the town that we live in and the demographic that we live in as far as what makes people comfortable and so forth. And um, But our biggest growing pain probably is just the, the day-to-day, you know, funding and operations. Um, we do try to maintain a low tuition because of where we live and, and um, wanting to make it accessible to as many families as possible. So, you know, we rely heavily on the generosity of donors and our annual um, spring golf tournament that's coming up in April, on April 24th here at the Uvalde Golf Course, you know, is our primary um, fundraiser for the year, and we rely heavily on that. And we've got a few um, churches in town who provide us um, monetary donations um, periodically. 
um, I think the biggest, you know, blessing that I see for some of our other private schools in the area is that they are church-sponsored, whereas we're not affiliated with one specific um, local church. We're non-denominational, so we've got, you know, several different churches who do provide support in various forms. Um, but just that ongoing, day, you know, day-to-day struggle to to try to maintain everything that we need to do right by the students and, and provide them what they need. Now, speaking of day-to-day operations and whatnot, um, let's talk about your faculty. I'm kind of interested in uh, what this, a snapshot of, you know, one of your instructors is and what brings them to UCA. Oh, uh, gosh. You know, I mean, we, we're constantly saying around here that, that to work at UCA, you definitely have a calling because you're <laughs> definitely not here for the paycheck. <laughs> Hey, that's, same thing with the radio. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, it's, it's a uh, passion job. It's definitely, um, definitely well below the, the average pay in Uvalde for a teacher. Um, so it's definitely a mission at its heart. Um, mm-hmm. You've got to want to be here um, or have a super great husband who has the primary income. Right. We're blessed to have that with many of our teachers. Or wife, you know, it's 2020. Or, or wife, whichever the case <laughs> Exactly, but um, but you know our teachers our teachers are here because they love Jesus first and foremost, and they want to see um, these kids taught um, and taught well, but taught in the Word first. And I think that's kind of what drives us um, in anything that we do here. Well, very good. Well, again, we're talking to uh, Larry Wright. She is the head of school at Uvalde Classical uh, Academy. The website is uvaldeclassical.org. Let's go ahead and talk about uh, the COVID-19 situation because that's just what everybody's... Uh, I know you mentioned that things are pretty um, pretty normal at UCA. There are, I'm sure, state, local, national mandates and blah, blah, blah. Uh, how how much of a strain was that? I'm sure there was meetings and conference calls and, and memos and emails and all that stuff, you know, all that red tape you got to deal with, with, with oh, yeah. just, um, addressing COVID-19. How was that for, for you, you know, as a leader and then your course, your instructors as well and, and the students? Sure. We, you know, of course we spent the majority of the summer doing lots and lots of research, um, conference calls, like you said, talking to, um, state leadership and local leadership and just kind of, getting everything um, ironed out as far as what, first of all, what our actual requirements are. Um, We're blessed that we do fall under the 501c3 religious organization. So, um, you know, we were able to get documentation from state leadership showing that, you know, we're not underneath the government mandate or the governor's mandate for masks um, being required. Um, so that was a blessing because we choose to leave that authority to the parents. We have some students who wear masks. We have some teachers who wear masks. Um, but we believe that the final authority rests with the parents, that it's a personal responsibility. Um, we think everybody's responsible for protecting their own health and, and protecting the health of others in that if you do have symptoms or have been exposed, you know, you need to be responsible and not risk it exposing someone else, but at the same time, you know, we certainly understand the anxiety that masks can cause um, some adults, much less children, and yeah. we wanted to leave that authority to the parents. Um, we've kept everything, like I said, as normal as possible within the school building. Um, we've been open since se- September 1st is when we started school back up. Um, we've not had to close. We've not had to quarantine. We've had um, one um, student that that tested positive after um, being in school, but they had not been in school a, a few days before actually having any symptoms. And um, so that student and the sibling um, both ended up contracting it. But um, other than that, none of their additional class contracted anything, no other families, none of their teachers. Um, and we believe that that was a true testimony to the, you know, we've, of course, increased cleaning protocols and sanitization and, um, you know, keeping the kids um, distance as much as possible as our space permits, Um, but we're just not making a huge deal out of it in appearances. Does Mm -hmm. that make sense? Yeah, yeah. We're doing what we need to do, but we're just not drawing so much attention to it that it distracts the kids during... I think that is a fantastic point, because I think that a lot of it, especially because of the the media, you know, the press on it, uh, it's so sensational that it's such a big deal. It's such a big deal, whether you wear a mask, whether you don't. There's always a discussion, you know, the cleaning, who's cleaning, what's not, the distancing, and it's always a conversation, and that, I think, is more stressful than just the actions of doing or, or not 
not doing, you know, and uh, especially the kids where we just want them to grow up, you know, love on each other, you know, learn and and go on their, you know, their their lives. Um, and, and it's a lot of stress, I think, on the kids. So so I, I think that is a fantastic um, way to handle things personally. Well, we've, we've had success so far. And like I said, we've we've been super blessed to be 100 percent supported in that avenue by the parents. And, um, you know, and God's kept his protection over this building. He's, he's kept his students safe here. He's kept the teachers safe. Um, people have been responsible, and if they have been exposed outside of the school, you know, they've done the right thing and stayed at home long enough. And um, it just, I mean, just everybody being responsible. I think it's been a true testimony to just being responsible, not um, letting the anxiety and the stress of everything consume you and just keeping things as normal as possible while doing what needs to be done. Well, very good. Now, say I'm a parent, you know, I, I'm considering um, enrolling my child uh, at Uvalde Classical Academy. Give me the quick sell, you know, you don't have to sound like a used car salesman, but uh, give me the pitch, if you don't mind. Tell me tell me what I can expect, or maybe uh, let me know what it is. I mean, maybe I'm not even a good fit. Uh, how, how does that conversation usually sound? Sure. Well, so what we do first is we tell everybody to, you know, take a look at our website. They can get lots of information on the website, what we do, um, some of the kids' activities, different things like that. Um, there's some admissions information on there as far as tuition, um, enrollment, and all of that. And then if they're interested after that, they can contact UCA at the 591-2242, and we can set up a, an additional informational meeting and a school tour so that they can see everything. Um, our open enrollment for um, the application process for new potential students begins on March 1st of this year, and um Starting on March 1st, we'll take applications, and then uh, we go through a family interview process. Um, we obviously want families who are on board with our statement of faith and what we're doing here. They're going to support you know, our cause and our mission, um, support what's being done in the classroom, um, even in their home setting. Um, while ideally they would be active members of a local um, Bible teaching church, it's not a 100% disqualification if you're not, um, because we do have families here that don't fit that situation. Um, but they are still supportive of their child learning about Jesus and taking that information home and having those discussions at home. And um, so then we just move from there through the enrollment process. We do a student assessment to make sure that we're able to place them in the level that's most appropriate for them, and then we proceed from there. Well, that's some great information. And again, uh, you need to start off at UvaldeClassical.org. We've been talking to Larry Wright, the head of school at Uvalde Classical Academy. And uh, I guess before we wrap it up, go ahead and plug that uh, that you said a golf fundraiser coming up soon? We do. It's a four-man, or excuse me, four-person days. <laughs> <laughs> so PC. We, have, we do have a few ladies that play and uh, actually right, yeah. play very well. Um but it's a four-person golf scramble. This year we're having it here in Uvalde at the, at the golf um, course. And uh, it's on Saturday, April 24th. It's $150 per person entry, and that gets them their full round of golf um, and the dinner that night. There's some great prizes. We also sell raffle tickets from now all the way up until that day where we um, raffle off 10 guns. Nice. Oasis Outback is gives us a great deal on some guns and helps us out there. And so we raffle those off. Um, those are $10 a ticket, and we just appreciate the community's support. You need to be giving away the ammo. That's that's the hard stuff to get. <laughs> that's what I've heard. <laughs> well, it sounds like a fantastic event. So everybody get more information about that, um, I'm sure, on the, on the Facebook page and or the website as well, too, or just call uh, Evalda Classical Academy. Well, Larry, thanks again for the wonderful update and uh, for joining us here for National School Choice Week. We uh, just so uh, we appreciate what you guys do in town and uh, giving, you know, parents uh, another option, you know, for uh, to, to, to educate their kids in the way that they are, I guess, uh, so inclined with um, whatever their convictions are. So you guys uh, are fantastic at giving us those options. So anything else we didn't cover that you really need to get out there? I don't think so. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure. All right. That's going to wrap it up here with Uvalderadio.net. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.